Hello everyone and welcome to today's Learning from the Legends session. I'm Brady mcgrath Kong, Membership Manager with the National Auctioneers Association. Thanks for joining us. Learning from the Legends is a free educational series produced by the NAA to share the professional experience and knowledge of some of the association's foremost experts and industry veterans. We're excited today to be joined by Jack Hines. Jack has been in the auction business for 50 years and is president of Hines Auction Services which conducts approximately 200 auctions a year in real estate, personal property, farm, commercial, and more. He's known across the industry as a premier educator and senior instructor at the Worldwide College of Auctioneering. Jack is a past president of the Wisconsin Auctioneers Association and was also Wisconsin's Auctioneer of the Year in 1997. He is a member of their Hall of Fame as well. Jack is very involved in his hometown of Ellsworth, Wisconsin, where he has received awards for outstanding community service and has been named Business Person of the Year. With the NAA, Jack is a former member of the Board of Directors and holds the CAI, AARE, and GPPA designations. Jack was inducted into the NAA Hall of Fame in 2016 in Green Rapids, Michigan. Thank you for joining us today, Jack. Well, you're, you're entirely welcome there, Brandy. Um, I'm also was on the Board of Trustees for the National for three years as well. And so I've, I've lived the auction business my whole life and so I have a passion for it and always will have. Nice. You're very involved in uh, teaching new ed auctioneers with Worldwide. As you think back to when you were in their shoes, is there anything you'd wish you'd known then that you know now? Well, i got to go back to when I first started, which was technically uh, 63 years ago when I got out of high school. I helped my dad clerk auctions and he always thought that I could be an auctioneer, but in them days, it all seemed to be that everybody was the self-taught auctioneer. In other words, you picked it up on your own. So I tried it for a number of years, and it just never worked for me very well. So um, I was going to give up on it. And where my dad ever found out that the world, at that time, was Rice College of Auctioneering, where that auction school was in Mason City, Iowa, I don't know. But he said, that's where you need to go. you got to learn the basics. So. To Mason City, I went, and of course I um, came out of there, and I came back. And I got the basics to the auction business, and when you talk about the basics, it's knowing the numbers. Technically, if you want to know the truth, we're learning a new language only to talk by numbers. And of course, once I got the basics, I took off on my own. I had nobody else uh, to work with, but I decided to go out and see what I could do and I did well I shouldn't toot my horn but I did very well and I can say this that it was probably the best learning experience I ever had at that school and since then of course I've been their senior instructor and I always encourage everybody to go to the school learn your basics to the business the business end of it not only the chant and the numbers but the business end of it as well and it'll always be rewarding to you. So um, I wish I had went sooner to school, but I didn't know anything about it until my dad found it someplace, and I don't know how he happened to find out about uh, Joe Rice's World College of Auctioneering, but that's where I went, and that was in uh, 1966. And uh, so uh, what else can I say except that it's been very, very rewarding to me. You touched on your experience as a senior educator at Worldwide, and you are definitely known by many as a great mentor for new auctioneers. Did you find someone early in your career that was a mentor, and how did you find them? Um, the one that I found that I have to look back in my early career is probably none other than Joe Reich himself, who owned the auction school. He started that in 1933. And he was a legend in the auction world. I think he started the car auctions, too, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, he was the one that owned the school, and I went down there. and I took after him quite a bit, and then he took me under his wing. He used to sell at South St. Paul Livestock Market and uh, stockyards. And I went up there and worked with him for a number of, uh, I shouldn't say a number of years, maybe a couple of years or so. But he thought I was going to make a good auctioneer. And he worked with me diligently, and he had a lot of words of wisdom, too. But there was only one way to do the auction world, and that was the way Joe Rice did it. So I guess I 
I would have to say that he was my mentor and and he thought I was going to do well because he hired me as a teacher the following year to teach at the Worldwide College of Auctioneering now, but his school. So just a little note on that. In 1933, he started the school. There's only been four owners, and that is Joe Reich and Gordon Taylor and uh, Bill Addis and now Paul Bear. And needless to say, I work for all four. So um, I'm pretty proud of that fact that he thought I was going to do well, and he he was he was just a super good mentor. And to this day, I still look up to Joe, even though he's in heaven or wherever he is. I, I'm sure he is, but he's left us, you know. But anyhow, um, that's that's my take on it, and I will never, ever, ever uh, feel any differently as far as that's concerned. So uh, that's that's my mentor. <laughs> Jack, by the way, um, by, by yep. the way, Brand, by the way, Brandy, I've offered my services to all these new auctioneers that come through the school, and to be their mentor. And I've, I don't know how many I've done over the years, you know, down at the conference and show, you know, just to make them feel at home, you know. Yeah, I was going to ask, do you have any idea how many different students you might have had over the years? Well, I think it's somewhere around twenty thousand. That's amazing. That that I've taught you. Um, I also um, am a very strong advocate of the National Auctioneers Association, and I do give that presentation to every class. And I think that through worldwide, um, we probably have some of the highest percentages of people or of students joining the NAA, um, not only from what my little aspect that I do, but from the whole school itself. One of the scariest steps for many auctioneers when they're first deciding that this is what they're going to do is to take that step and make it a full-time, you know, full-time focus, full-time career. What advice do you have for someone who's looking to find work with clients or employers? Well, first of all, when if you're going to be working with clients, uh, you must remember that we're not selling a tangible commodity. We are selling our services and I always go back to the same thing, and that is that when you approach your uh, clients, the first three or four seconds that they see you, they determine whether they're going to do business with you or not. And so when you present yourself, you want to present yourself the best way you possibly can, but a word of caution, don't try and be somebody you aren't. Be yourself because people buy from you. I mean, if they're if you're a salesman, or they'll have you do their auctions because the fact is that you're honest and you want to treat them like you want to be treated. And so you got to portray that to them and you got to sell them on yourself and what you can do for them to help them out of their dilemma or whatever it might be. But anyway, it is a people's business. And so you must remember God made each and every one of us different. And so um, you got to react accordingly. But if you're yourself and you act the professional way you should, and that's what we try to do to everyone, and that is that make yourself prepared, who you're going to meet, kind of get some background if you happen to, you don't know too much about them or whatever it might be or if it's a company, but get yourself educated pretty well before you get there. Once you get there, if you can convince them that you're there to help them um, and you're, that you're trustworthy and you're honest and if you got a good personality, all I can say is that you will do well. So um, learn all you can about them, learn all you can about the auction world, and then sell yourself. As you look back on your career, what do you consider some of your greatest successes as an auctioneer? Well, I, that's a pretty big question. I've only done about nine or 10,000 auctions in my days. <laughs> but in, in in your in answer to your question, I guess one would be the one of the first sales that I really stick out in my mind is that I had a family of six heirs and they could not get along, and they were down in the southern part of Wisconsin. And anyway, um, they sent out questionnaires to 30 different auction companies, not only in Wisconsin but also in Chicago and around the world, around the United States. Uh, they had a 
million dollar sale and they wanted to know if I was interested and I responded. Well, after they got the 30 responses and they narrowed it down to 11, I was still in the running and then they narrowed it down to three and then they interviewed all three of us. And as it turned out, they selected my uh, auction business to do it. But the funny part of the whole thing was that that they wanted a million dollars for it. The six brothers and sisters would not talk. Two of them talked to each other, but the rest of them were all just bitter about mom and dad's estate. So anyway, that's why they decided to put on the auction. The funny part of it is that, um, I shouldn't say the funny part, but I was trying to figure out, it was about two hours out of Chicago, and I was trying to figure out how I could get those Chicago people there, and it seemed like about three o'clock one morning, I woke up with the bright idea that maybe I should put an auction ad in the Chicago Tribune. And so I put an $8,000 ad in the Sunday Tribune from Chicago, I had the open house there, and I had a ton of people. As it turned out, I had two people from Chicago by the first, there was four lots. And anyway, they paid $585,000 a piece for them, so I knew I was home scot-free. But the thing of it was that I always like to say you gotta be a salesman, and when he said that he wanted to take two, the person that bit him up, I said to him, I said, well, you take one too, won't you? And he said, yes, so I sold three of them for that amount of money, and then the last one went for just a hair under that. Well. As it turned out, we had 50 other acres to sell to. The sale brought just exactly two million five hundred and seventy-five thousand or ninety-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So I made those people happy, and I had a mark in my life. But how that one little ad portrayed those Chicago people because they are the ones that bought all the lots. So that was that was one of my experiences. Another experience I had not very long ago was I did a million dollar farm machinery sale. <clears throat> the man had two sons in the business with him and one of them wanted to, uh, one of the wives wanted a divorce so it threw the whole thing into a turmoil because it was a three way partnership. So in order to pay her off, they had to have an auction. Well, I did their sale on the cattle and the machinery and the, gonna, um, try and sell the land. They said, no, we want to rent the land if we can. We had somebody wanted to pay them. $308 an acre for rent. Well, that was quite a feat, you know, for around here. But I said, maybe if you put it on an auction, you know, maybe it'll, we'll get more for it. And as it turned out, we put it on the auction and we end up with $505 an acre rent. And the man had to sign a three-year contract. He had to pay $180,000 the day of the auction, which was in March and the 1st of April, the balance before he could even turn the first, um, well, the first cultivation of the soil. So anyway, that was one case where it worked out good. And like the owner said, even if it was sad that his son-in-law, or his son and daughter-in-law split, he said, I should have done this a long time ago because he had 650 acres to get that kind of rent. And he says, I don't have to worry about if the crops are gonna be good or not or whatever. So anyway, that was another rewarding experience. And the last one that I'm just gonna leave with you, and that is that, uh, we had a cabin up on Spider Lake, which was up in Hayward, Wisconsin. And the man that wanted to sell there, Mr. Natto, he didn't believe in real estate people. Of course, I'm a broker too, but I, he, I was an auctioneer and he put his, his confidence in me. And to show you how you got to build, show you how you build a bond of trust before that sale. He wanted a million dollars for it, but before that sale, came up to me because I sent out flyers to all the doctors at Mayo Clinic and St. Croix Orthopedics all over. He came up to me, I don't know if he could see the land, a day or the house the day before. I met him up there, and anyway, before he left that day, he gave me a check, a signed check blank, and said that I've got to be in Chicago over the weekend for a wedding. He says, if it goes under a million dollars, I want you to buy it for me. As it turned out, it went over a million, I had to call him back, and then up with a million, a hundred thousand. But here's a doctor, blank check, signed, gave it to me. That's why I say you gotta be so trustworthy and treat people like you wanna be treated, fair and honest, that he gave me that check, and I wrote it out for $110,000 for him the day of the auction. So anyway, um, 
these are just three of the things that come to my mind as I was uh, contemplating some of the successes, and I have had a lot of them, and I've had some funny successes too. So that should take care of that part of it. Anyway, there for you, Brandy. That last story is amazing. It speaks to the trust that is required between an auctioneer and a client, and to be left with a blank check and have it written for hundred and ten thousand dollars when you're virtually a stranger to that person. That speaks you know, quite a bit to our profession. Yeah. Well, that's, um, and that's right. For sure, you're speaking of being honest and stuff. I'm um, just going to just come to mind just now. And that is, that, <clears throat> excuse me, we did the whole factor sale. And uh, anyway, um, just a husband and wife, both of them were in the care center, both of them on state aid, and we sold their house and while they were getting ready for the house or the sale, uh, there were some just some coins kind of rattled in one of the boxes that we were in. So we looked in. Before we got done between the mattresses and all over, we found sixty-eight. <coughs> excuse me, sixty-eight thousand dollars in cash. Wow. And we got ready to sell. A, we did a two-day sale because it was a, a lot of stuff. The second day, I sold a nineteen sixty-one Cadillac that he had, and that hadn't been run forever, and he had. Um, one flat tire in the front. This young kid that bought it for five hundred and ninety-five dollars. He says, "Can I look in the in the trunk to see if that spare is up so I can drag this thing home tonight?" And I said, "Go ahead." Well, he looked in the trunk and don't you know? You hear he come out with a grocery bag. He says, "There's some personal letters in here. I think you should look at." And Percy Gunderson was the power of attorney. And anyway, um, I give it to him after the auction. We counted out over twenty-four thousand dollars that was in that in the trunk of that car, you know, and it been the money had been in there so long that the paper clips had rusted through the money, but all in all, we had almost $100,000, and these people were supposed to be, on, and they were, on welfare, but they, he hid his money. He didn't have it in his safe in his house or in the garage, so give you an idea, to be honest. So the state of Wisconsin was happy with us because we paid him 100 grand, but the thing, they're more than that because we sold everything else he had, but anyhow, that's being honest, where if one of my employees was not honest, they could have taken the money and gone. Nobody had known a thing about it. And that's only one instance. I could give you 25 of those kind of things that we find in the in the uh, auction world, especially for the older people that went through the 30s or in the Depression days, and they didn't believe in banks, so they kept it themselves, you know? But <laughs> True. Um, trustworthy, honesty, what else can I tell you about it, okay? <laughs> um, certainly we know that you've helped many of the NAA members, but how has the NAA helped you as an auction professional? Well, that's one thing that I really encourage, and that's one thing that I did that I was very, very impressed with, and that is that after I got out of school in 1966, of course, I just, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of money, but I joined the Wisconsin Auctioneers Association also the Minnesota Association in 1966. And then in 1972, I joined the National, and it was the greatest move I ever made because the fact is I've never had a more profound education than what I got from NAA. I mean, their education programs are the best. And of course, as you announced earlier, I have a CAI degree and the uh, AARE, which is the real estate course, and the general uh, personal property appraisal uh, designations. Anyway, um, the NAA is so much involved, not only with education too, but also what the states are doing for the auction profession. They are the right, I should say, they are the arm of the whole auction industry. And I love the seminars. If you go to a conference and show, and I always encourage all of our newly um, our new auctioneers to attend one conference and show so they get a handle on what the rest of the auction world is all about. And CAA does that. I mean, they have a ton of seminars. They have um, something going all the time that's in the interest of the auction profession. In fact, NAA is the largest auction profession or professional organization there is in the world. We have them all over, from all over the country. but. NAA has been just a super, super um, right and education or, uh, help for
for any auction or getting started. And they'll, if you're in doubt, if you have problems, all you have to do is call the home office and they'll help you. They'll advise you, whatever it is. So um, I can't say enough good about NAA or our state associations, but they're, they're all part of one big, uh, you know, big group of people, as far as professional people, as far as that goes. Um, there's some came to mind just as you were asking me there too, but um, also with NAA, all the board of directors, all the home office personnel are super, super people. Um, they're there to help you, and if you have any problems, I mean, just getting started or whatever it is, and I'm I I make myself available the same the same way, but NAA will take you from the bottom all the way to the top if you follow their recommendations. Thank you, Jack. Uh, do you have any final words you want to share before we go? Um, I, I don't know what it would be except the fact is that the dear Lord has been very, very good to me. Um, you probably don't know this. Well, you may know it too, but I have both my bells replaced in my heart, and I still can cry an auction from 9 in the morning until 5 at night without stopping. Um, one little cute little thing you might, I could tell you so many stories of, I think of them, I sit here, you know, but anyway, um, all the, all the people in the business, you know, and that is we're there to help people and that's what our services do. And if you can do, I always say this, if you can make yourself available, God gave me some talents that I can share with people. That's what I'm in this world for because we're just passing through. And as I told you, I thank the Lord every day because I healed up so well. And not only that, but I have, I'm, I got a new knee just recently. And so uh, every day is a, a gift. I guess that's what you should do it. And I always say this, take it for what it's worth. And that is, hey, stop and take a few minutes each day and thank the dear Lord for all the blessings and all the graces and everything that he has given us as we travel through this earthly adventure, I guess you can put it that way. So treat the auction with profession, with respect in it, and you will be rewarded very, very heavily. Before we end today's session, a couple of closing notes. We'll be back next month with a new installment in the Learning from the Legend series. You can watch past sessions at auctioneers.org slash legends. Thanks again for taking part in learning from the legends. We'll see you next month.